Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for May 5th, 2022, recorded on 3.20 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the upcoming 2022 Atlantic hurricane season and what to expect for this upcoming hurricane season and a look at a multi-day severe weather event shaping up across portions of the Mid-South. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon. Everything is nice and quiet as we would expect one pretty big cluster of thunderstorms now exiting the southern parts of Africa, moving into the tropical main development region. Of course, this isn't anything to watch, but you know, this could make its way uh, over the intertropical convergence zone over the next several days, maybe affect portions of uh, Trinidad and Tobago, but this isn't a tropical wave, just a cluster of thunderstorms. We'll see how it holds together. The intertropical convergence zone as a whole, you can clearly see kind of where it is stretched across this axis right here in a more concentrated area of showers and thunderstorms and overall cloudiness uh, in the eastern Pacific here uh, as their season is only just a few days away. Again, the eastern Pacific hurricane season officially begins on May 15th. And that will also be when our regular hurricane outlook and discussions will resume uh, which will be mainly daily, and also the uh, tropical weather outlooks for the Atlantic Basin will also start on May the 15th as well, uh, if I do recall correctly. Elsewhere across the United States, we notice a pretty active uh, severe weather system right now across portions of the Mid-South and portions of the Midwest, the low pressure center right here, trailing front, and we have showers and thunderstorms breaking out across this area, producing some pretty widespread significant severe weather. Of course, we had some significant severe weather yesterday across portions of Texas and Oklahoma. And unfortunately, a few chasers did get hit there. We also had a tornado in Puerto Rico the other day. Uh, very crazy because Puerto Rico typically does not get hit with that many tornadoes, but they did get, uh, I believe it was an EF1 tornado the other day. So very crazy indeed. Checking on the sea surface temperature anomaly map, this map is updated as of yesterday, May the 4th, be with you for all those Star Wars fans out there. But right now we're pretty much just looking at La Nina conditions again, especially in the ENSO 3-4 region, the El Nino Southern Oscillation Index, which is this area roughly and throughout here. And this basically measures where, you know, whether we're in El Nino, La Nina, neutral, whatever. And we're clearly firmly entrenched in a La Nina. And this is kind of very atypical because La Nina patterns don't particularly persist for three years. Now, just off the screen here and down into the subsurface, we have a lot of warming way out here in the far western parts <clears throat> of the area. And this over time may begin as the atmosphere kind of reverses pattern may begin to translate all the way up here and you kind of get this prolonged downwelling effect and then spreading out of the warm waters but that probably will not occur until at least 2023 uh, if not a little bit then thereafter but we're still in a La Nina pattern for right now and very still uh, showing that we have a semi-negative North Atlantic oscillation uh, in the sense that, again, we're still dealing with somewhat lower pressures uh, compared from Iceland all the way down to here. And so that is a reduction of the trade winds across this area, allowing this area to so slightly warm. And it's kind of been a dramatic warming, not even a slow warming. It's been more of a dramatic warming. If we go to the, uh, the OSET versions here and we look at the map updated as of today, we can kind of tell that we're still in this kind of EOF phase two here. And this is kind of a phase where the subtropics are warmer than the main development region. For this to kind of be a phase one AMO pattern, we'd like to see that kind of classic horseshoe pattern. We don't quite see that right now, although I think we are starting to kind of see some signs of it, but we're just not necessarily there yet. Uh, but the one thing to kind of point out here is, again, notice how warm, though, the subtropics are. Now, <clears throat> that, this area has been warming over the last several days. We've had a little bit of a pattern flip where we go back to a positive AMO, which does warm up the subtropics, but we'll be flipping again here shortly. Um, but this has warmed the subtropics a little bit. Again, we could still see a lot of fluctuations between now 
and you know June 1st um you know we're only at May 5th right now and of course by peak season uh, I would suspect this whole entire area here to at least be warm enough to support uh, intense tropical cyclones however the big question is does the subtropics remain warmer than the traditional main development region and if that is the case then we could be dealing with more of a suppressed pattern for the MDR. However, as I've said in the past, a suppressed pattern for the MDR does not mean a lower hurricane season. That could still mean you get a lot of close in uh, systems, especially in the Caribbean, Southwestern Atlantic. We know how this game works. Hurricane Ida last year, perfect example. Hurricane Michael in 2018, perfect example. I don't think you need those examples though. I, I think it is very well evident that we don't need the MDR to produce intense hurricanes, but that is a possibility if the MDR is substantially warmer that, you know, we could have storms forming quicker and they're more intense out there near the Cabo Verde Islands. In fact, today, the new ECMWF European uh, seasonal forecast did come out and this is for the Atlantic and the Western Pacific basins. So this is the tropical cycle, uh, tropical storm frequency, basically. So think about this as your numbers, so to speak, your raw numbers coming off the European seasonal forecasting. They are suggesting about 16 named storms for the Atlantic Basin, 16.4. Um, and that is, you know, actually quite a bit above average. Again, the mean is about 14.3 uh, is the climate mean. So they are forecasting an above average Atlantic season and a normal to below average eastern pacific basin where we can see the ace index the accumulated cyclone energy is about the climate mean is about 100 and 1.3 that's 130 percent so that means that we were 130 so that means that we're kind of sitting in an ace index roughly uh really of about you know 145 ish that's about you know a little about 130 ish percent or so but we're still looking at a, at a pretty busy season it, it seems and um, <clears throat> I would not be surprised to see these numbers verify in the least also notice how the western pacific and the eastern pacific actually kind of remain below average at or below average so that is definitely kind of interesting that the ECMWF is kind of forecasting the Atlantic to kind of be the standout basin this year now Will this come to verify? I don't know. And if we had a crystal ball, we could tell a lot of things. But this definitely is an indication. <clears throat> it's definitely a more aggressive um, forecast from the ECMWF over the past few years. So this is definitely something to kind of pay mind to and pay attention to, but not something to get worked up about and whatnot. But it is just something to kind of keep in mind. Now, on the other flip side of this too, this is the can sips forecast. This is a, a climate forecast model. <clears throat> and this is the sea surface temperature uh, forecast anomalies here. So departures from average below and above. And we're looking at this. So we'll kind of run this out through August, September, and October. Now notice this is kind of what I've been saying is that the can sips. Now this is just one forecast, one model run, etc. So we know how those go. And we know what I think of them. However, it is just a bit interesting that the CANSIPS forecast is also still indicating a warmer subtropical Atlantic compared to the main development region, but some signs of that positive phase one AMO in the uh, Atlantic. And that could be something to kind of pay mind to. And if we look at the three month precipitation totals as well, we also notice that through uh, October, this area of the main development region and Caribbean is considerably above average, especially right here in the Caribbean, where we're looking at forecast totals about four to six uh, inches above the long-term average on, on the mean. So this is definitely something to kind of keep in mind. Notice the dry tropical Pacific here. So <clears throat> with all this being said, I think this definitely goes to suggest that we could have a rather robust hurricane season. However, this is not necessarily the nail in the coffin, and there are still other things that have to be sorted out with time here, and that will be dealt with accordingly, and we're going to go more in depth on that in Monday's video that I'll do on this upcoming Monday, so stay tuned for that. 
Now, looking at the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar wind. This, so this is at about 5,000 feet off the ground here, above ground level wind, and vorticity here, which is shaded in these nice yellows, oranges, and reds. So what are we looking at here? Well, first of all, we notice that uh, this is the mainland United States over here, of course, the coastal regions, and this is Africa. Why are we showing this? We typically show this during hurricane season. Well, we do have an interesting little system that will be kind of moving off the North Atlantic coast here over the next several days, and this is running through about uh, 2 a.m. on Saturday. We have a low pressure center somewhere over West Virginia at this point, and it is moving out into the Atlantic here. Now, over the next several days, we notice that this will begin to kind of meander. This will slow down and meander because we have a ridge of high pressure out here, and we just don't really have much forcing, and it's kind of getting strung out around here. Notice all this vorticity that is just getting strung out like a, like a piece of cheese just getting strung out. Uh, across this region and so this area of low pressure just kind of sits there and meanders for several days in the tropical Atlantic and or in the subtropical Atlantic and we notice what begins to develop <clears throat> over the next several days we kind of get a more focused area of vorticity to develop uh, this is about at hour 168 so this is next Thursday at 8 in the morning we start to get a consolidated area of low pressure to develop just off the southeast United States coast, uh, about a couple hundred miles to the east here of Melbourne, Florida. And this could have some subtropical characteristics. Um, the one thing I want to pay mind to here, if we kind of take a vortex average sounding here off the GFS here from Pivotal Weather, it is kind of important to know here that we do have a little bit of wind shear. We kind of noticed that again, we generally have some southwest to kind of northeast flow like this. <clears throat> so again, the wind is coming from southeast or coming from southwest, blowing towards the northeast. And then aloft here at about 200 millibars, we have wind coming from the southeast going towards the northwest. So there is some shear in this environment. And again, we can kind of see the SRH here or the, uh, yeah, the SHR, the relative helicity in this area is around 15 knots. And the relative humidity also is not very impressive. Again, we have some pretty dry air. It's about 59 degrees here Fahrenheit at the surface. And uh, just about at 800 millibars, this kind of tapers off here to just about 32 uh, Celsius here. So this is just roughly, uh, you know, kind of a, a rough estimate here using the skew lines. But this is definitely not the most favorable environment for tropical development. And we also notice that, again, we just don't really have the moisture. And one thing to kind of note here is if we look here on the GFS forecast from Pivotal Weather, this is kind of something uh, cool that we can see. This is the 500 millibar temperature. So this is up at about 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. We notice here's our uh, trough, here's our trough of low pressure, the low centered somewhere right around here near the uh, Potomac River at this point uh, and New Jersey and Delaware, etc. <clears throat> now we notice that after this amount of time, it just kind of sits here and meanders. But notice that generally speaking in tropical systems, warm core tropical systems do not have a significant temperature contrast to the surrounding atmosphere. So if we just move here a couple you know, 100 miles south, we notice that the environment here is around negative 10. We jump up here, it's negative 19. This is a pretty big difference within just a couple hundred miles or so. And this tends to mean that this could in indeed be warm core, we can kind of, or sorry, cold core. We kind of see this new piece of, uh, you know, just this another piece of this low pressure kind of, you know, be slingshot around here. And this seems to suggest, again, that this could be just a cold core system. We have this really cold core low here, minus 20 degrees Celsius temperatures in the surrounding environment here. Now, eventually, this does kind of mix out with time, and the overall temperatures do begin to kind of decrease, maybe suggesting a transition into a more warm core. But generally speaking, this here is all cold core and there's nothing really to suggest that this would be a fully warm core system. So at best, it would be a subtropical system at best. Now, if we look at the surface precip, again, we can kind of see 
uh, that we'll take a look here at the precipitation. And we can definitely tell there will be an increase in precipitation uh, as this, you know, energy, <clears throat> these pieces of energy move across, you know, in the subtropical Atlantic and move westward with time. Really not so sure if we have any tropical impacts to portions of the southeast coast. This will be something to monitor with time. Uh, of course, if anything happens, you know, tropical, you know, subtropical will be out there chasing it, but not really something to kind of, you know, it's just kind of on my radar right now, but it's not really something that uh, is really catching my eye at this point. It seems more likely that this will just be a non-tropical low uh, if anything does happen. <clears throat> so that kind of concludes the tropical point. Real quick, we'll just go over the severe weather aspects. We have a day one enhanced risk across portions of the Mid-South, including portions of Texas, northeastern Louisiana, and portions of southern Arkansas. For day two, we have an enhanced risk, including 10 tornado, 30 wind across portions of Alabama and Georgia. And on day three, we have a marginal risk over portions of Nebraska and also portions there of South Dakota. All right. So with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more on Monday.